All right, Will Zalatoris, one under 69. Will, can you talk us through that final round? Yeah, I, um, I battled like crazy. You obviously say that about every, um, every U.S. Open round you play, but considering where I drove it today, um, the fact that I was even under par was obviously pretty nice. Um, you know, I, I thought I made a lot of nice putts, uh, you know, just to keep myself in it. Um, stealing one on nine, saving par on 13. Um, you know, I, I, I really felt great with a putter all week. And, you know, I had a great putt on 18. It just happened to hang out there. And, um, you know, it was, uh, it was fun, man. It was, uh, you know, Matt's shot on 18 is going to be shown probably for the rest of U.S. Open history because that I walked by it and I, I thought that going for it was going to be ballsy. But the fact that he pulled it off and even had a birdie look was just incredible. So hats off to him. I mean, he played great all week, obviously, and uh, he was solid all around today. Did you think you made that putt on 18? I did. With about six feet to go, I thought I had it. Um, you know, I, I, I guess I was just checking my phone earlier, and a bunch of people were saying that Zinger said that everyone had missed that putt high. Um, I guess I was the closest all day, which I was like, well, thanks for the consolation prize. <laughs> Go ahead, Brantley. Is, it, is this a fe uh, different feeling for you than than Southern Hills? And yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, I, I battled all week. Um, you know, I, I was pretty sporadic off the tee here and there. I had spurts of really good and spurts of really bad. Um, you know, I, I think this one probably is going to take a little bit more processing than that one. Um, you know, I... I like I said, I got no regrets. I thought I played great all week, um, you know, especially getting off to the start that I did today. Um, it's uh, it's it stings, obviously, obviously to have uh, three runner ups so far in my career in majors. But, um, you know, keep knocking on that door. I mean, we're obviously doing the right things. I'd pay a lot of money for about an inch and a half and I'd probably be a three time major champion at this point. So, um, you know, we'll uh, just keep doing what we're doing. Over to your right, Rex. How long did it sting before the previous runner-ups? Um, this one's, I think this one, I'm just fresh coming off of 18 because I thought I had it, and it just happened to stay out there. Um, this one hasn't sunk in. Um, Masters was pretty special, just obviously just being there, considering that seven months prior I was playing on the Corn Ferry and then having a chance to win the Masters. Um, yeah, this, this one's... Uh, I honestly don't know what to take from this yet. It's uh, it, I was pretty pleased just because, you know, obviously I'm known for my ball striking. I'm sure all the Instagram morons are going to be saying it's probably has something to do with my left wrist flexion coming down, but I promise you it's got nothing to do with it. Um, so, you know, I think um, just keep doing what we're doing. You know, this, this one stings for sure, but um, I know that we're going to get this. And real quick, club on 16 and kind of your emotions at that point. Yeah, I hit six and <laughs> pushed it about 20 feet. Um, tip your cap, say thank you. Um, you know, I, I knew that I had a chance there um, to get it going. Um, you know, I hit a good putt on 17. I just had a really hard time with getting the uphillers to the hole this week just because they're so uphill. Um, the greens are just so fast that, you know, you're so used to having ones that are trickling back down the hill. And ha I, I left so many straight uphill putts short all week and so um you know I, I think it's something that i hate good putts it's just it's the nature of the beast i mean these greens are brutal and um you know like i said to shoot 67 69 on the weekend um i'll take that in any major championship go over to your left with andy uh you've been close obviously a bunch was there something today that you felt uh the near misses at southern hills or the masters that you drew on that you improved on today, like you did better than other times? Yeah, you know, I I, I think I'm just more comfortable with it now. Um, you know, Ryan mentioned to me on the first tee today that when we played Saturday in the final group at the Masters, my first Masters, where I finished runner-up, he and I both were way more nervous in that situation, um, just given that we hadn't even been in a final group on tour yet. Um, and so I think... Today, I, I, even though I, I got off to kind of a rough start, um, I just I felt comfortable all day. Um, you know, even making, kind of being behind the eight ball and having a safe par, it's just it's just a tough golf course. And you know, accept bogey at you know whenever you can. And 
I happen to stay par a few times. So um, I, I think the comfort level being in these situations is just going to get better and better. And I thought, you know, I, I thought, you know, people, I've already been asked, you know, how nervous are you on the putt on 18? It's like, I got nothing to lose. I mean, it either, you know, either goes in or it doesn't. Um, you know, I'm not happy with finishing second. You know, it's not like I'm trying to coax that down there. I'm obviously trying to make it. So, um, you know, I, I, the comfort level is there, especially now that I, I know I know I can do this and I, I just have to keep waiting my, waiting my turn. Stay to your left here, Kevin. Mm -hmm. we, we'd probably watch you guys sit and wait on 15T for 10 minutes. What's that like in a major when you're tied for a championship, there's all this nervous, quiet tension in the air. Everyone's kind of wondering like what to say, what conversation to make. What was that like? Uh, we were, uh, Alex and I, or uh, Matt and I were just making jokes. I saw his brother, Alex, who obviously he went to Wake Forest on the side. And, you know, after the long wait, Billy said, play well today, boys, like we were on the first tee. Um, it was fine. I, you know, I, I try to stay loose, um, you know, on my, I, my hip had been locked up all week and it was just trying to make sure that I just stayed fresh with the cold air. And so I just really just stood there and stretched. It, it, didn't, it didn't affect either one of us, obviously, given Matt made birdie. And um, I hit a pretty good tee shot, but obviously two yards offline out here doesn't really, uh, doesn't really pay off much. Over to your right, James. Are you glad it's a short layoff until, until the open? Yeah, you know, um, I... I think my head's still here right now. Um, that's one that is going to be obviously incredibly special being at St. Andrews for the 150th. Um, I think letting this one soak in, you know, take a few days off, might even take the whole week off and just kind of recover um, and then kind of get my mind back into it. Because, uh, you know, this, this one hurts in particular pretty hard, but... Um, it's motivating, you know. I got to keep doing what I'm doing. I know that we're going to get one sooner than later. Down the line, Brendan. Uh, when you talked about taking a peek at his ball on 18, um, did you then imagine, okay, he's probably going to do this, and then you see the shot he actually that he actually executes? Does that like cause any kind of recalculation of what your plan is in that moment when you see a shot pulled off like that? No, I mean, you know, at that point it's match play, and he's one up going into 18. Um, you know, you can't play match play against someone all day because someone else might do something. But at that point, you know, you have to assume that he's going to hit that shot. And when he pulled it off, you're like, hey, tip your cap. Well done. You know, now I know I have to make birdie and hope he misses. Uh, so, I, I mean, I painted that shot right over the flagstick and just hit it a little deep. But, yeah, like I said, that, that golf shot was, I mean, one in 20 at best. I mean, and to pull it off in that situation is incredible. Can, can you describe for – Late yeah. people, just how difficult, like why that shot was just so Yeah, hard. I mean, he was, he had to cut it around um, kind of an island of rough in the middle of that bunker. Um, he probably, I don't know how far he had, I, I'd say roughly around 160, 170. So he's probably hitting a seven or six iron and opening up and carving it off probably left edge of the green. And to get it to be just past pin high is just, like I said, the fact he had a look was just awesome. I mean, that's, that's, like I said, that's a shot that's going to be shown for, you know, when they show the highlights of future U.S. Opens, that's one that's going to be shown because that's that was just incredible. Thank you. Fire right, Michael. Thank you. You're a super young guy, and you've already been in three of the most intense environments that any sport uh, can offer. Uh, how does the intensity of these experiences, is there anything else in life that can compare to the intensity of these experiences? Yeah, I don't have uh, kids yet or I don't have a pregnant wife yet, so I'm, I'm assuming that's probably got to be the closest thing. Um, you know, I... I uh, it's something that I've wanted to do my entire life. And so I, the nerves, honestly, it's, it's an excitement because you've imagined being in the situation your entire life. And now I've basically been in it, you know, three times in a major once on tour. Um, and it's, there's, that's why you play the game. There's nothing like it. I mean, it's every golfer who wants to win a tournament, you can say they're a little sick in the head because they're just adrenaline junkies. You want, you want that putt on 18 to, you know, get into a playoff or to win a tournament or whatever it is. And so, um, but yeah, I definitely, uh, I'm obviously today's Father's Day and I'm sure I'd probably took a year or two off my dad's life, unfortunately. So it was, uh, it was, it was a blast. So that's great. Thank you. A few more questions here. Start with Sports Illustrated for Kids. 
So I see you have Francis Lee Met and Eddie Lowry on your shirt today. So what impact and what role did your caddy play in this final round? He, Ryan's been with me um, for about three years now, and he's basically been a older brother to me. Um, you know, he's been there through the ups and the downs. He's my biggest supporter when I'm out there. Um, you know, there's – he's just – He's done such a good job with keeping me in the moment, especially in these situations. Um, you know, we're out there cracking jokes whenever the tension gets high. And um, yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a brother for life. So he's uh, obviously, I know that he'll probably read this and he'll probably give me a hard time for saying nice things to him, considering I don't say it that often to his face, but um, he's been a, a great friend and someone that I'm very grateful for. Two more questions here to your right. Well, um, Phil obviously had a lot of top 10 in majors before he broke through. Jason Day with ten, uh, nine top 10s in majors mm -hmm. before winning. How do you, I guess, what's the key to you being a guy like that rather than countless guys who had top 10s and haven't been able to break through? Yeah, you know, I, I think I just got to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, you know, I, I frankly um, at the PGA was kind of a... I wouldn't say a surprise, but it was considering where I was Monday through Wednesday. Um, the fact that I had a chance to win and making those putts coming in was pretty nice. Um, it's just little things, you know. It, it's not the same thing at every single one. I mean, we're talking inches. I mean, I finished run. It's not like I finished runner up by four or five a few times. It's been one all for all three. So I've just got to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, I got to keep knocking on the door because eventually. Um, like I said earlier, the comfort level's there. You know, I'm I'm not afraid to be in the lead. I mean, I've got nothing to lose out here. Um, you know, so let's just keep doing what we're doing, and eventually we're going to get one. Can you, I guess, describe that mental process when you have to convince yourself that, and you've said all the right things, and you've done exactly what you should have done, and you've shown the play every time, but what do you have to tell yourself in those moments? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean... I'm three shots away from, you know, practically being a, you know, having a chance of being a three-time major champion. So, you know, a bounce here or there, or, you know, this week uh, my driving was uh, was atrocious. Um, you know, I'm, I think part of that might have had to do a little bit with the hip, but, you know, I thought that I, the fact that how bad I drove it this week to have a chance to win, I'm, I'm very pleased with. But all the other times it's been, you know, maybe missing a, you know, four or five, six foot or whatever. I mean, I didn't, you know, I, I guess technically I didn't three putt once this week and I didn't have a double. So typically that leads to playing well in a U.S. Open. Um, so that's something that, you know, the recipe's there, the game's there. It's just, like I said, I, I just got to wait my turn. All right. Uh, we'd like to welcome to the stage John Bodenhammer to present the runner-up medal to Will. Hey. John. Yeah, no, great, to see you. No, great, great playing this week. Thank We're you. proud of you. Thanks, John. Yeah, you know, present you with your silver medal. Thank you. Thank you. See you, Los Angeles Country Thank Club. You. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Will. Congratulations. Thanks, guys.